Can Starship land on the moon in 2026? I know the mission to return humans to the moon has officially been pushed to 2027, but let's be real. You can't just roll a Starship out of development and expect it to land a crew on the moon on the first try. At least one successful landing test has to happen first, and 2026 is the only realistic window if SpaceX is serious about the deadline. So can it be done? And what would that first landing actually look like? In 2020, NASA turned to IT with a request to land astronauts on the moon. At that point, the program lacked a dedicated lunar lander. So Elon Musk responded by proposing a specially designed version of his next generation spacecraft, Starship Human Landing System. This vehicle would come in two variants, cargo and crewed, both similar in size to the standard Starship, but heavily modified for lunar operations. They would feature soft landing systems and life support infrastructure necessary to safely deliver humans and equipment to the moon's surface. However, this was no simple task. Starship HLS is essentially a 52-meter tall, 9-meter wide cylindrical spacecraft that must land vertically on the moon's uneven terrain and later launch back into lunar orbit. Safely executing this kind of mission, especially on an untested platform, was a daunting challenge. NASA's timeline was ambitious, but it was understood from the outset that the full mission profile wouldn't be tested in one go. Instead, SpaceX was initially expected to carry out an uncrewed demonstration mission involving orbital refueling, lunar landing, and ascent from the lunar surface, ahead of any crewed attempt. Under the 2020 plan, this demonstration was slated for 2025, paving the way for a crewed Artemis III lunar landing in 2026. However, ongoing delays in Artemis program development have pushed those dates back. Now, if SpaceX hopes to meet the revised 2027 target for putting humans on the moon, its uncrewed lunar landing must occur successfully by some point in 2026. First, let me make one thing clear. The question isn't whether SpaceX can do it. It's whether they can do it by 2026. That's the real debate. Because, as it stands, there's a lot SpaceX still needs to accomplish before that deadline. Since its first launch in 2023, SpaceX's massive Starship rocket has flown 10 times, with mixed results. While several of those flights ended in what SpaceX calls rapid unscheduled disassemblies, a tongue-in-cheek term for explosions, there have also been major milestones. Among them was the successful landing of the Super Heavy booster back at Starbase in southern Texas, marking a critical step toward full reusability. Although SpaceX had previously managed to land Starship prototypes in solo suborbital flights, they've yet to land a full system involving both the booster and upper stage. That's the next big objective. Achieving it would mean that both stages could be rapidly refurbished and relaunched, which is essential to SpaceX's broader strategy of high-frequency, cost-efficient missions. Starship's upper stage has also successfully splashed down in the ocean during test flights, allowing SpaceX to refine its re-entry and descent procedures. But the real target is to bring it back to Starbase, landing it not in water, but by catching it in the Mechazilla arms of the launch tower just like the booster. Elon Musk has said the first on-site Starship landing could happen as early as the first half of 2026. So far, Starship has completed several suborbital flights and carried out test payload deployments, such as dummy Starlink satellites. However, it has not yet achieved a full orbital insertion, a critical milestone for any mission beyond Earth orbit, including those to the Moon and Mars. Reaching orbit will require the upper stage to separate from the Super Heavy booster at about 75 kilometers altitude, and then execute a series of complex orbital insertion burns using its six Raptor engines. The first true orbital flight could happen in 2026, but getting into orbit is only part of the challenge. The next step is bringing Starship safely back to Earth. That means performing a controlled descent from orbit, surviving the intense heat and pressure of atmospheric re-entry and landing precisely at Starbase, 
This ability is non-negotiable for missions returning from the Moon or Mars, and it remains untested in a real orbital flight. Beyond that, there's another make-or-break challenge, in-orbit refueling. For Starship to carry out deep space missions, it must dock with another Starship in Earth orbit and receive a propellant transfer, likely of cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen. This maneuver is critical because Starship launches with minimal onboard fuel, keeping weight down and maximizing payload. SpaceX plans to attempt its first ship-to-ship -ship refueling demonstration sometime next year. If successful, it would be a major leap toward enabling lunar missions like Artemis 3. As it stands, SpaceX faces a tight schedule. Before anyone can board a Starship bound for the Moon, all of these components – launch, landing, orbital flight, re-entry, and in-orbit refueling – must work flawlessly. But if they can do it, here's how Starship will land on the Moon in 2026. To make this mission architecture possible, SpaceX is developing a complex orbital system that involves three types of Starship vehicles working together. The Starship HLS will operate exclusively in space and on the Moon, never returning to Earth. To supply it with the necessary propellant, SpaceX is building an orbital fuel depot that will store cryogenic liquid oxygen and liquid methane. This depot will be filled by a separate vehicle, the Starship Tanker, which will launch multiple times from Earth to deliver the fuel required for a lunar mission. Because the Starship HLS and the Orbital Depot do not return to Earth, they are not burdened with heavy heat shields or aerodynamic control surfaces. This design choice reduces overall mass, allowing fewer tanker launches to meet the fuel demands of a single lunar mission. Despite these differences, both the HLS and Depot variants share core propulsion systems, each equipped with six Raptor engines used for launch, landing, and ascent. To maintain stable cryogenic conditions during long stays in orbit, both the HLS and the Depot are covered in specially designed insulation tiles. These tiles provide protection against micrometeoroids and orbital debris, while also insulating the spacecraft from solar and terrestrial heat. This insulation is distinct from the ceramic heat shielding tiles used on the tanker variant, which must survive re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. First, an uncrewed Starship tanker will launch from Earth into orbit. This vehicle is designed entirely for transporting propellant. Its internal volume will be filled with fuel tanks. However, it won't carry much fuel on its initial launch. Instead, it will be refueled in orbit by multiple additional Starship tanker launches. The exact number of tankers required for this is still uncertain, with estimates varying. Elon Musk has suggested it could take around 10 separate launches to fully refuel the depot. Once the depot is ready, Starship HLS, the human landing system, will launch from Earth without a crew. It will dock with the tanker in orbit, transfer the fuel it needs, and then undock. From there, it will begin its journey to the Moon and enter lunar orbit. If this were the actual Artemis 3 mission, the next step would involve NASA astronauts launching separately from Earth aboard the Orion spacecraft, entering lunar orbit, and docking with Starship HLS before descending to the surface. But since this mission is just an uncrewed test, there's no need to worry about that for now. After reaching lunar orbit, Starship HLS will begin its descent to the Moon. When it's approximately 100 meters above the surface, it will switch from its main Raptor engines to high-thrust landing engines located around the mid-body of the spacecraft. These engines are specifically designed to reduce plume impingement, the dangerous blast of exhaust that can kick up lunar dust and destabilize the lander. Unlike the Raptors, these smaller engines burn gaseous oxygen and methane instead of their liquid forms. Because there's no launch tower or ground infrastructure like the Mechazilla system on the moon, Starship HLS will deploy landing legs to stabilize itself on the surface. While SpaceX has perfected vertical landings with Falcon 9 boosters here on Earth, doing the same on the Moon presents a new level of difficulty. Lunar gravity is only about one-sixth of Earth's, which, ironically, makes tipping over more likely, not less. This isn't just theory. During the Apollo missions, astronauts often struggled to stay upright as they moved around on the Moon. The low gravity makes balance tricky, and a vehicle as large as Starship is especially vulnerable. A small amount of lateral motion, just a few meters per second, can be enough to cause a lander to topple if its center of gravity shifts outside the footprint of its landing legs. Interestingly, the maximum tilt angle a lander can withstand before falling is the same on the Moon as it is on Earth. That's because gravity cancels out in the relevant equations. 
So why not just make Starship shorter? In theory, a shorter lander would be more stable, but in practice, it's complicated. Starship's height is largely determined by the vertical stacking of its propellant tanks. Methane is roughly twice as dense as liquid oxygen, so placing the tanks side by side would throw off the lander's balance. Instead, SpaceX stacks them vertically to maintain stability during flight, which unfortunately makes the vehicle much taller. In fact, SpaceX has consistently increased Starship's height with each major design update. As the company pushes for more payload capacity, it builds larger internal tanks, which results in a taller spacecraft overall. While this introduces new challenges, particularly for landing on uneven terrain, many experts believe the stability problem is technically solvable. Like much of the Starship program, it's likely to come down to iterative testing, trial and error, and gradual refinement. And if there's one thing SpaceX has demonstrated over the years, it's that they're not afraid of trial and error. Many people are quick to say that Starship HLS is behind schedule, but that criticism often ignores a key fact. SpaceX was never given much time to begin with. Back in 2021, the NASA Office of Inspector General issued a warning that the HLS development timeline was overly ambitious compared to other major NASA programs. According to their report, spaceflight programs over the previous 15 years took an average of 8.5 years from contract award to first operational flight. In contrast, the HLS program was aiming to achieve that in less than half the time. To put it in perspective, the Apollo lunar lander took about six years from contract to its first successful mission on Apollo 11, and that was with substantially more funding, even after adjusting for inflation. Based on those historical trends and the HLS contract award date in May 2020, the OIG projected that the program could realistically experience up to 3.4 years of delay and that would still be consistent with past NASA programs. Another common criticism is that Elon Musk doesn't take the moon seriously and that SpaceX is solely focused on Mars. But that argument overlooks the facts. Yes, Mars remains SpaceX's ultimate goal, but Musk has publicly stated his interest in the moon as well, including plans to build a moon base. And while much of SpaceX's attention has been on getting Starship flight ready, they have been actively testing and developing HLS-specific systems in parallel. By February 2024, SpaceX had already fully tested the life support system intended for Starship HLS. That same month, NASA and SpaceX conducted a full-scale test of the HLS to Orion docking system which will also eventually support docking with the Lunar Gateway Station. NASA reported that SpaceX had completed over 30 HLS-specific development milestones by that point, covering key systems like power generation, communications, guidance and navigation, propulsion, life support, and space environment protection. Progress continued in March 2024, when SpaceX successfully performed an internal cryogenic propellant transfer during its Integrated Flight Test 3 a critical technology for refueling in space. Then, in April, NASA confirmed that SpaceX was already working on a cargo-specific version of the HLS lander, which is expected to enter service by Artemis 7. So, while it's true that the work is incredibly difficult, it's clear that SpaceX is far from idle. Just looking at the activity around Starbase, it's hard to argue that the company is dragging its feet. Yes, the timeline is tight, and yes, there will likely be delays, but this is cutting-edge, unprecedented work. Building a fully reusable lunar lander, capable of transporting humans to the moon, is no small feat. It requires not only engineering breakthroughs, but time, patience, and relentless iteration. So before declaring the project late, it's worth remembering what SpaceX is trying to accomplish and how fast they're moving in comparison to everyone who came before them. Determination and hard work have always powered human progress, and there's no reason to believe this will be any different.